Rockingham Planning Commission membership item under old business um, following Mike. Um, I'd like to start it off. Cliff Senate had requested uh, an opportunity to say a few words or whatever. Cliff, why don't you have a seat? And um, I think once, um, you know, Cliff has said what, what he wishes to say, I think the board should feel free to ask him questions or make comments or whatever. First of all, thank you very much. Uh, for the record, I'm Cliff Senate. I'm the executive director of the Rockingham Planning Commission, and I appreciate um, Chair Mr. Chairman's changing the agenda around a little bit. Um, there are, before I get started, and I will be very brief, I just wanted to introduce a couple of people. Uh, Glenn Koppelman here, who is uh, there. He's the current chairman of the Planning Commission. He is uh, the representative from Kingston. Uh -huh. He's the current chair this year. He's also the chair of their planning board. And you, and you know, uh, Barbara. Mark, Ol Mark Olson, who's uh, one of your commissioners, obviously, chairman, Ch planning chairman of your planning board and, and one of the commissioners uh, from Hampton, um, uh, and two alternates here, as you know, Barbara, Barbara and, uh, and Maury. So not that you don't know them already, but um, just to reinforce that they're, your rep they're part of your representation on our, on our organization. Um, the, the reason I, I asked for some time tonight is that I, I, I know that you were going to discuss membership, and I, I saw the, uh, the article in the Hampton Union about the discussion you started at your December 9th meeting. And there were a couple things that were reported, at least in the paper, that um, were really were not quite accurate. And I, I wanted to come and just speak to a couple of those issues really not speak to them. I put them on paper so you have all that and I won't, I won't go over that unless you have questions. But there are two points I did want to emphasize. Um, one being that sort of the nature of the organization and how Hampton relates to that organization. Um, you know, we're, we're not a private organization and we're also not really um, sort of an outside organization. We're created under a state statute, RSA 36, which gives towns the authorization, not the mandate, but the authorization to create a regional planning commission if they want to. So two or more communities, and this is, you know, happened in the late 60s and 70s, two or more communities get together and they decide if they want one of these entities um, in their region. And they do that, they take a vote at town meeting, they appoint commissioners that create the commission, essentially. Uh, we call it a board of commissioners, but they are representatives of you, of the, of the member towns. And in our, and, and the state office of planning many years ago established planning districts. They're somewhat artificial, and from time to time they change. But the planning district that we're in here uh, is called Planning District 6. There are 26 towns in it and you're one of those 26 towns. So uh, our board of commissioners is made up of at least two commissioners from each of those communities, except for one, Salem, who's not a member. So that's, that's the, uh, the, the setup. And the, I think the key thing to remember is that those commissioners direct me um, and the staff. It's not the other way around. They approve the work that we do. And if there are things that, say, for example, your commission, commissioners don't like about what we're doing, we'll hear about it. And we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll make sure that what we're doing is responsive to what the town of Hampton wants. And I think that's the, that's the good part about the way regional planning commissions are set up in New Hampshire. They're voluntary. Towns don't have to join in the first place, and they don't have to contribute dues if they don't like the services they're getting. The second point, and I think this is a one that was, um, was raised as a question, is that, and I think, uh, it is, is it, why is Hampton paying dues and becoming a member of the Planning Commission if you already have town staff? And, and a further question was, is it worthwhile? Are you getting uh, something valid for the dues that you're spending? I think that's a great question. I have no objection to anybody asking that question. You should ask that question every year. Um, 
I think that in Hampton's case, you're getting a lot for your dues. There's a there's a whole attachment uh, to the letter that I sent that sort of summarizes those things that have been going on over the past three or four years that we've been involved with with Hampton. But I think um, the question was, since you have a town planner, why should you get the service? Why why do you need our services? And I would say um, it's a good point, but the interesting thing is, uh, as I pointed out in the letter, every community that has a professional planner in this region is a member of the commission except Salem. And I think they're not members for, for, for different reasons. And it's not that because you have your own planning staff that all of a sudden you don't need services because typically the towns that have their own planning staff are the ones that are larger they have much more complicated problems and <coughs> frankly if, if it's a small staff it's probably harder for them than it is in a town that has no planner and gets a uh, circuit rider services from us which Hampton did for for many years um, <coughs> so I just wanted to say I think if you look around the region uh, and looked at what those larger communities like Hampton <coughs> get for their dues, even though they have a planning staff, it's it's quite different. In Portsmouth, for example, the thing they want most from from the planning commission is to make sure that uh, development projects in the region around them are getting the proper review that they need to have, and that their transportation projects and they've had a host of them as you know over the past five years very expensive transportation projects are getting the advocacy that they want them to have in the in the state process um, other examples Exeter and Stratum they both have planning staff uh, they both used our services regularly for all sorts of things mapping or uh, doing open space plans whatever it is because, and this is always, almost always the case, they, their planning staff is tuned in size to deal with the applications that they receive on a, on a you know, weekly, monthly basis, not to do the extra stuff that are, that's sometimes necessary. Updating a master plan, there are very few planning departments in any of our towns that have the ability on their own to update their own master plan. It's too you know, it's too much sort of added work, typically. A lot of, a lot of towns do what you do, one or two chapters at a time to, to keep the thing up to date and sometimes get some help doing that. Um, in Hampton's case, the things that you have been asking us to do in the last few years, the things that your own staff really can't do, one is uh, some specialized mapping work. Uh, you, you wanted some examples of what the new zoning proposal at the beach would look like. So we did a 3D model with our mapping that would show what the, s what the mass of those buildings would look like at the height, at the new height that was being proposed and the setbacks. Uh, the Safe Routes to Schools program, we've been working with that uh, committee to try to get some some of those uh, travel plan grants that the DOT made available for that program. The planning board a couple of years ago asked us for an affordable housing ordinance to see if the town was, you know, was vulnerable at all under the affordable housing law, whether you were compliant with that. And that involved a lot of work analyzing your uh, property, uh, the, the uh, residential values of of the town, both rental and owned, data which really doesn't doesn't exist. It's it's quite difficult to do, but it's it was useful for them to have us do it because we have a statutory requirement to look at regional housing needs. So they thought, well, if we did it, the analysis it would be, you know, advantageous to them to have to have. <coughs> so we did. Didn't charge you anything for it. Just did the work. I've uh, been sitting on the downtown uh, advisory committee, I'm, uh, spending quite a little time on that. Been working a lot with the, the Beach Commission, doing a parking study a few years ago. 
advocating for a lot of those transportation projects that you know that they are very um, uh, intent on, on succeeding with, especially Ocean Boulevard, but also to some extent and in the somewhat more distant future, the Underwood Bridge, big, big things that, um, you know, the town needs. Um, anyway, th I, I'll yeah, stop. Yeah, I, I think we got yeah, that. you got um, that. <coughs> Before we, we have any comments or questions or whatever, I noticed that Mark Olson, is the chairman of the planning board, is in the audience. And Mark, is there anything that you'd like to say or? Mark Olson, 75 Mill Road. I am the current chairman of the planning board. Um, I appreciate you letting Cliff come in tonight and share his thoughts and our thoughts about the importance of maintaining this relationship. Um, I, I don't really know where this came from. I was brought to the RPC office about a week ago, um, kind of unbeknownst to me. I met John Nye in there who expressed a lot of concern about um, what you have been discussing as far as withdrawing from our relationship with them. As Cliff has mentioned, 26 communities in Rockingham County are members, with the exception of the City of Salem, and I'll emphasize City of Salem, um, being the exception. They're a good active group of people. Um, we wrestle with these types of issues that are beyond what anybody, frankly, in this room or in this community is capable of um, addressing on a, on a regional basis. We do like to maintain our control. We do like to have our say. These folks aren't looking to push anything down our throat necessarily. They're there to kind of coddle us through the process, whether it's securing money or what's in our best interest um, based on what our input is. This isn't a, this isn't a group of people that are uh, having the tail wag the dog. Um, and I think that that's one of the most concerning things that has been said that RPC tells us they meddle in our business. I don't think anything could be further from the truth, and, and Cliff just reemphasized that. Um, beyond that, I, I don't really know where it came from. As I mentioned, uh, John Nyan came and um, brought it to my attention. Um, it just seems to me that if, if people are trying to save money, there's probably a bigger elephant in the room than, than this. Um, these folks are here to help us. Jamie needs the help. We need the help. And um, I think it would just be a shame if we weren't able to maintain. Well, I, I watched the, that portion of the planning board meeting on Wednesday, and I sent a link mm -hmm. in the starting time to the other selectmen. So if they, obviously Mary Louise was there. So if they didn't see it, they could. Um, you correct me if I'm wrong, but, but a couple of um, perspectives that I have interpretation. Number one is I think that it's, and Fred, please comment. Sorry. Correct me if I'm wrong, give your own comments. But I think, number one, I think it's the planning board and the planning department that have the majority of the interface um, for the town with the Rockingham Planning Commission. That's true. V very limited interface. There's been a couple of isolated projects over the years. I've been a selectman for six years, but it's primarily the, the planning board and the town planning department. Two, what I heard in listening to that portion of Wednesday's meeting is I believe that the, the planning board was, was unanimous in the opinions that they expressed of wanting to retain the relationship with the Rockingham Planning Commission. Is that an accurate statement? Mark? That is an accurate statement, yes. Um, and Fred, do you have any comments? Sir? We work with the Commission all the time, obviously in the Planning Department. They work, they work constantly. I do serve on one of the committees, which is the uh, committee currently working on the uh, transportation issues for buses here in town. And um, per periodically there is some question that will come up through the state. This is one of them. We have a, uh, a bus terminal here in town or not. Uh, that needs to be discussed okay. because the state is anxious to have it discussed. And um, you do provide resources to us so that we can ingest and debate those things. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, and Mary Louise? Since I'm the culprit, I have gained additional insight into this uh, operation since I have uh, been serving as the select man representative uh, to the planning board. I have, I'm not saying that the whole uh, program is, is no good, but what I'm saying is I have become increasingly concerned. For example, uh, the letter to uh, Commissioner Clement of DOT dated March 12, 2013, uh, where the Rockingham Planning Commission is 
writing to the DOT to indicate strong support for the state acquisition of the Hampton Branch segment of the former B&M Railroad line. It's a couple of the uh, bullet points. It says it will prevent the fragmentation of ownership and future development that would be incompatible with the corridor's use as a transportation facility and preserve it for a variety of potential future transportation and utility uses. It also talks about a corridor that's safe and efficient for bicycle and pedestrian travel. And it will reduce traffic on the Route 1 corridor, particularly during the heavily congested summer months, and help maintain the region's air quality. The Route 1 corridor, it's going to be a bypass. We need that for drainage, if anyone asked. I don't know who's going to rip up the railroad tracks, and I don't know where the money's going to come to make another mm -hmm. roadway going up the old B&M railroad right-of-way. But it's, it's, it's a, a situation like that that concerns me. That's in your letter. Then when you look at the, um, the grant that was given for the Hampton Center District study, and we went over that in detail on the 18th of December, which was last Wednesday, uh, your um, uh, grant uh, writer, or wh whatever Mr. Matisse's title is, and um, Attorney Gerald was there uh, with me, and he also had, in addition to his comments, he had comments from the uh, uh, building inspector. If, if we are paying grant money for someone to study the Route 1 corridor in Hampton, the business district to enhance the district and make it look all pretty and have little walkways and have leasing, uh, parking, and so forth. The, the presentation of the warrant article that the voters would be expected to vote on in March was very sloppy. Uh, it included uh, items that certainly raised alarm on the part of the uh, town council and the building inspector and myself. Uh, I don't know what the length of the study was determined to be, but I would expect a more professional presentation from someone who's being paid to do something like that in behalf of this community. Uh, I, and we went into detail and it's available on tape um, Can I from just the 18th meeting. just make the point that we did not do that study? We're on the committee, but the grant came from the New Hampshire Housing Finance Authority to the town. The town selected a consultant to do the work. Jack, mm -hmm. Jack Meddy. Well, was that was selected by the planning board, I assume? Um, we did interview a number of firms, um, but ultimately Jack was the recipient of that grant, yes. Right. So it came, but this came through the state and through... Right. Not, not through us. Well, we, we, sat, we sit on the advisory committee, or I do, at, at the request of the town. Well, but again, the consultant was not selected by the Rockingham Planning Commission. That's correct. It was selected by the Hampton Planning well, Board. We, we did choose the Jack Meddy, yes. You know, us as participated as active member of downtown Hampton. This is your, this is your Good. material On the advisory you committee. provided us. Downtown Village Corridor Advisory Committee, funded from dues and transportation planning grant, no cost to Hampton. I, I uh, certainly appreciate that. Um, you are talking about uh, the Route 1A study, et cetera. That's all state. That's state land. Scenic That's byway. Not that's not something that we're going to be paying for. It will be nice to see a nice repaved Route 1A. I, I'm just concerned that we're, that we're doing, to some extent, make work, and to some extent doing things like that intermodal transportation study. The state of New Hampshire hasn't got enough money to finish the bridge over the Great Bay. Where's the money coming from for all this? I can understand the little random grants of 41000 to do the Hampton District study, which is awful, by the way. Um, I, I'm, I'm wondering where realism comes into this. I understand planning, but if you're, I mean, we might be looking at the monorail coming to Hampton Beach. That was an old idea. Where I, I, I'm frustrated at what I'm seeing, and some of it um, doesn't seem to be terribly realistic. So I, I admit to being frustrated, and uh, I did uh, open a can of worms, but I have a, well, 
But there's no sense in sitting here and, and biting your tongue if you see something that bothers you. No, I, I agree with that. And I, I you know, the Hampton um, intermodal study, um, you know, to some extent, and I, and I think I did explain this in the, in the letter, that to some extent what we do is we try to match what, a, what we think a community is interested in doing with trying to get uh, some funding to get it, get it done. And, and that case of the intermodal study, um, it, was, it was a recommendation that came out of the Route 1 corridor study. It was, it was brought to us uh, through that study by, by one of your representatives. Mm -hmm. It seemed like a reasonably good idea to me. I think for, and it's, it's sort of a long-term vision. Oh, I'd say, yeah. And, and you're right, there, 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 there are funding, transportation funding problems, and there are a lot more important things to do first before that. Um, what we were doing here is, you know, trying to decide whether it was a viable concept or not, and that's the purpose of the study. There was this concept, but we didn't know based on the history of the property because there was a landfill there whether it could be uh, redeveloped whether there was a way to do it without moving the roads around very much so it wouldn't cost very much and and that's in fact what the consultant came up with a, a plan that leaves the roads primarily in place just changes how they're used so it's not so okay. roundabout okay anyway. any of the other selectmen any comments or oh sure I have a bunch of them thank you mr. chairman back to this intermodal study down to where we're going to take the big loop-de-loop -loop around south of Hampton and square it off to make it look like an intersection in Kansas. It's going to cost a ton of money to tear down all those bridges and to square it off and we'll end up with a very uninteresting and very typical of a Midwestern town. What a waste of money, okay? Tearing it all down is going to cost a fortune. It's going to cost a fortune to build it to replace it. What do you gain out of it? you want a bus parking lot there someplace. You can have a bus parking lot in the middle of that circle you have now, or next to it if you want to be pushy about it. And I'll, while I'm on a roll, Winnick County Intersection, that Winnick County Intersection is part of Hampton's history. You come along with a plan to square it off. I know some of the planning board were hot to trot over it, mm. but if you just square that thing off, you're moving back to Kansas with a squared off intersection. That is part of history. We went through this thing on Winnicunit Road yep. <coughs> with Park Avenue, and they made a mess out of it. The buses couldn't even turn there. Mm -hmm. And then we had to go back and Mickey <coughs> Mouse it back almost the way it was. Yep. So my thought about that is, if you're going to tamper with history, let's don't make it worse. Let's improve what we have and keep the atmosphere and the effect we have in Hampton. And it was brought up at your meeting last night by Mr. Nyan that you had all these things like the task program. I'm familiar with that. Those grants were available. They didn't let fall out of the sky from the uh, Rockingham Planning Commission. And the safe routes to school, it's the same thing. Okay, I'm involved with that, very directly involved with that. There was, there, the, the grants were out there whether you had anything to do with it or not is the point. And the Hampton Beach Area Commission is a state entity. That's not Hampton. If you did a study for them, fine, but that's not Hampton's study. They're, they were created by the state. Hampton didn't create them. We don't own them. Okay, so I'm, that's another point. I got the 101, Route 1, and it's a state, in, and the state beach, uh, Ocean Boulevard. Mm -hmm. That's a state road. Yeah. Right. They own it. We can't d touch it legally. That belongs to them. If they want to fix it, they will. If they don't, they won't. We've seen the politics on that, trying to get them to work on, well, if you do this, well, if you do that, they'll do us for us. And what is it, RPC done for us in that arena? I haven't seen too much, no offense, but if you come up with this stuff on the south of town, you come up with this railroad bed where the road's not wide enough, to, I mean, the railroad bed's not wide enough to have a road. Thank God. I mean, that is, you'd have to take land by eminent domain. Somebody'd have to buy it. I don't have any money. The town doesn't have any money. The state definitely doesn't have any money. So that takes care of that problem. Maybe a bike path at the best. So, I mean, even though I think you guys do some wonderful things, and that leads me to a couple of questions. I know that if you don't pay dues, you, don't have, you can't vote. Right. But if you don't pay dues, can we still get some of the planning 
techniques and services available to us as I think we can, right? Uh, if, uh, if our board says we can, as I said, we, we, we do what they say, um, I, would, I would guess that they would be inclined not to because you're not paying your fair share. Okay, my next that question. That is the case with Salem, for example. But, but can I respond to a couple of the things you said? Sure. Uh, the Winnicunit Road project. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't our uh, idea. You, you're, you're talking about a different Winnicunit Road project. He's talking about Winnicunit Road at Park Avenue. That's one of them now. Yeah. That wasn't our idea either. Yeah, but we had to Where go back and from? fix it. Yeah. Right. That was, that was generated by the It had nothing to do with Right, that was generated by the school. So and I'm just pointing just out that was a mess. Yes, the school generated that problem. I know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. and then, but not the really one that went kind of blocked that road. not have been an issue. The, the, the one here. And the T intersection. Right. Right. That we did help you get a CMAC grant to get the money to do it. But you hired the engineer to f come up with a design. You didn't like what they came up with, so you didn't yeah. use the money. Right. End of story. Our role was to help you get the funds to get the project done. Okay. I guess my problem is maybe our communication then to the RPC isn't what we think it should be Correct. because the voters have turned down that one kind of Lafayette Road, what, now two or three times? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a message all by itself. It's okay. not just Mike Pierce. But, but we try to respond to what you ask for and... Well, we're not... Maybe we're not we communicating very okay. well. Can, can yeah. we, Mike, Phil? I, I'm all set. Hey, uh, I'd just like to say Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? <laughs> no, we're going to do it. Mike? <laughs> Mike? Real, real quick. I'll real second quick. No, that. Phil's going to come. Uh, Chairman. Please. Uh, I'm not stepping on your traffic on this budget item, and uh, I applaud uh, the selectmen for bringing up the issue and raising concerns. Uh, I applaud Chairman Nichols for, for saying, hey, let's get a job from the sister board. And uh, I'm certainly not going to step on, uh, again, your traffic on, on what you think and what your board members want. Uh, Director Senate, uh, been on the website. Some of the stuff seems a little long in the tooth, doesn't seem real responsive, doesn't seem up to speed. I agree. Um, we and, have uh, you know, when we, we've just got these um, higher headquarters elements in, in, in our lives. And when you look down at Route 1 and you look at a business that just did 100 years, uh, when you look at all the people that do come to this town and, and all of the, the good, good challenges we have, and I wouldn't <coughs> want to live in this town without any traffic. And uh, I, I find uh, the uh, development uh, for the private sector on Route 1 in this last two or three years in a real tough economy speaks to the purchasing power of the people that live and work in Hampton, the, uh, uh, the tourists that come here that are driven by the hard work of people. And we don't necessarily always see it that it's coming from Washington, it's coming from Concord or this board. And it's coming from business owners and property owners doing their thing down there. But uh, thank you for your work, and thanks, thanks for coming back uh, in here tonight uh, on the holiday season uh, to, get a, to get a bite of that, uh, that steak. <laughs> and uh, I Bye. appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Mike? No. Um, I don't know where we go from here. I'll, I'll make my comment. I, I believe that most of the interface is from the planning board and the planner. Um, I don't pretend to understand. I understand some of it, but I understand a very um, small portion. It's eleven or twelve thousand dollars. It's in their budget, and I'm very comfortable um, looking to them to to make those kind of decisions and to simply rely on on the selectman's interface. Happens to be Mary Louise at the current time as the selectman's rep to the planning board. Um, you if we're going to keep proceeding with things like this, or you're acting as a pass-through, you know, recommending whatever, there's got to be better coordination and better supervision. And I think we we could at least ask the representatives to the RPC to perhaps consult with us. I believe they did consult with the board on that awful T intersection at Winnicott and Lafayette. But we maybe can keep a little bit better line of communication open. But, but when we're seeing messes and, and that that Hampton Center District presentation is a mess. But, but, a but I, I, mess. I believe that that is a function of the planning board and, and to the extent that the Board of Selectmen has influence on that, mm -hmm. the way to affect that influence is via the Selectmen's rep to the planning board in the context of, of the planning board. If I, I may, don't... Mr. C uh, Chairman, I want to have a question for Fred. Isn't it true that there was a Warren article passed a while back that has the chairman have the authority to either belong to the RPC or not? The selectman. Yes. The 
town meeting passed the warrant article originally allowing the selectmen to uh, en enroll the town in the regional planning commission and to have charge of that. Basically up to us then. Basically. Mm -hmm. You Basically. control the finances anyhow. So. Um, I'm comfortable with where we're going. I don't sense a motion coming from the selectmen to take any action. Does anybody wish to make a motion? Otherwise, I'd like to move on to the next agenda I'll, item. I'll be super brief. The article on the Hampton Center District and Route 1 is so flawed that that should not go on the warrant. If it's something that can be worked on into the subsequent year, but that is terribly flawed, and that should not be on the warrant. But take and I'm going to, that's fine. I'm going but to take, take to that up as that. our representative to yeah. the planning board in the context of. But the as a person board. who was on, involved with that, I don't know if we can just say that it was all totally flawed. I think a lot of the concepts were very. I good. had nothing to do with but drafting that. I didn't say you yeah. did. Let me finish, please. I'm saying that I was there, and most of the ideas that were melted there, and you were there too. There were a lot of good ideas. To, the idea was to help the businesses downtown. That was the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Now, if it needs to be fine-tuned, fine-tune it, okay? That's the planning board. I didn't say we had a finished product when we got it done with our last meeting. But you sh I'm not blaming the people who attended the meetings, but what I'm saying is when we see a finished product from a professional individual yeah. who has been hired to provide a service, and we're talking about enhancing businesses, I'm talking about depriving residents A, landowners, mm -hmm. both in the Drakeside Road area and the Dearborn Avenue mm -hmm. area, because of, of their rights as residential property owners, because that's the way the, the uh, article is drafted. And there's no excuse for not having a more, a better, um, more accurate article presented to the public. Well, that's why, okay. it, that's well, why let's, that's brought let's, to the let's, planning board, Mary okay. Louise, to let them We did talk. The okay, okay. okay. this is, that, okay. that's it. Okay, I, I think we've covered this subject. I appreciate your coming tonight. I appreciate your coming tonight, Cliff. Um, Thank you very much. Thank and you. I don't see, I don't sense any movement to change anything on the board of, the board of selectmen or we would have heard it. Thank you. Right. Good night. Thank okay. you very much. Shifting